Look at this. That's not fair. Like, this is not fair. Look at that. It's fantastic. So much damage. It's just crazy. Hey there, everyone. Kubashi here. New deadlock patch has dropped, and with it, a new character, Mirage, is finally here. Now, this is a character that has been in the game files for quite a while. He's changed a bit. He's now a bit different. A little bit more, I want to say, aggressive than he was before. Uh, but he's finally here, and he is super cool, and I'm here to share a potential way to play him and a build kind of in the very early stages. It's very, very hit or miss right now for me with how I build him, but I'm going to share my thoughts, and I'm going to tell you what is, you know, I think is good and what is not good. So let's get into it. Uh, I would highly appreciate if you're willing to leave a thumbs up on this video, but also follow if you want to see more Deadlock or Dota content. I normally make Dota guides. This one here is from Armage. Let's get into it, my. His first one is called Tornado. Now, Tornado is a good ability that's pretty aggressive initially. It moves you forward a certain amount of distance, and it also does lift up. Lift up in this case means that you will lift people a bit into the air. And that's good because you leave them in a hold here, where you can then follow up with more damage, or you can just kind of incapitate people. It's also a good get out of jail for free card, really, because look at how quickly it moves you out. For example, if you do go around a corner, you can very click move like that so you're able to actually play very defensive with this ability it's a wonderful ability the main thing here being how quickly it actually scales off of spirit 07 scale, spirit scaling is great and as a footnote that is also how we're gonna basically be building him as a character is we are going to predominantly focus on spirit as our main source of damage output his next ability is called fire scarabs pretty decent ability i think in general it's actually the worst in his kit basically you spawn these uh fire scarabs that you can then launch at your own will while you have them. The main thing about them is they're a bit of a aggressive tool and stay safe tool. You steal a bit of perma health for a certain amount and you add bullet resist. The main thing is that it's actually not kind of how you're going to do the most damage with this character because you can only hit one hero once. Uh, so because you spawn only so many beetles, you want to basically hit multiple people and not just the same person because you're not going to be able to stack damage up that way. So it's not like a great damage tool. So if we see here, we can go one, two, three, four, like that. Yeah, you can see we hit them and we steal a certain amount of max health. And that's great, but it's not like that great of a tool compared to his other stuff. But it's there and it's something to make use out of. Of note in particular is that he gets minus 15 bullet resist at three souls spent so you know the first one being cooldown and then second which costs two souls you will get 15 extra bullet so it goes up to 25 minus bullet resistance that's a good number a lot of people are not buying a lot of defensive items so you will be doing a lot of damage with right clicks even more so because we, we're predominantly going to be focusing on doing spirit damage sorry if i call it magic damage in this video this is going to be more of a way to assist your other players in acquiring more damage you know more damage sources never hurts next is by far in my opinion what makes him a insane character and also what is the most interesting about him it is Jin's mark i call it Jin's curse for some reason it is a passive ability that can be activated effectively when you have it skilled as soon as you land a single attack on someone you will apply a curse on top of him it looks like this. Now, when that curse expires, he, they will take damage, as you can see here. And the curse can also be manually cast by pressing three. So you can go one, three, like that. Now, it doesn't stop there. The interesting aspects of this is that this maxes out at eight multiplier, but you can't do it immediately. You have to hit after a certain window. So if we just go here, you can see how it doesn't increase. But if we wait a bit, there you go, you can see it. And you'll see this rectangle will show that you can do it and here we're gonna get burst damage because that is the highest it can go so when we go to times eight we will do a huge burst so it will go one two four eight so if you can hit land this four times you will then get a massive amount of burst now ultimately what will probably happen is that people will get afraid when you have this and duck out you can then manually detonate it if you want to so that's pretty cool um, it's also a good way to farm where you will land creeps. If we go over here quickly, you can actually go like one, two, three, and then detonate. It's not a lot, but it helps with farming if you do it correctly. Plus, because we are going to be playing a lot around Jin's Mark, really, or Jin's Curse, this is where the biggest part of our damage will come in. There is some huge potential here. Of note in here in particular is at 
five souls, the biggest one, the max multiplier increases, which means it will go up one more, which is insane because we will do even more burst damage that way. His last one is also super interesting. It is called Traveler. Traveler lets you go to any enemy that you can see on the map or ally, which is insane. Uh, after a 2.5 second channel, which is not long enough, if you ask me at all, like, that's just busted. And uh, I haven't gotten to play him too much because everyone is trying to play Mirage right now. But from the limited time I've played, you can use this as a get out of jail for free card as well. There's not a lot of characters that stun in the roster, and most people don't buy knockback that commonly either. It looks like this. We press 4, and we get to look at the minimap here and see what do we want to go on. Now, we can go on an ally target. Like, we could say if there's an Ivy over here, right? we could press her, and we'd go to her within 2.5 seconds. We can also do it on an enemy. Say we want to uh, go on Abrams here. It looks like this. And then we appear at Abrams. Now this is an insane killing tool because of that. Because it basically means that as soon as you have Traveler ready, you're ready to either assist your team with, well, just about anything. You could be doing a split push, and then you can see two people are coming for you. You start the channel. Maybe your team is taking mid-boss. You join in and help them with mid-boss. Maybe they're defending base. You can immediately come in and help them. The amount of scenarios where Traveler is just insanely strong is way up there. It's awesome. On top of that, you also get a movement speed buff and a fire rate buff when you arrive at the target. Now, it's only for four seconds. It's definitely like a minor part about it. It's it, it's fine. It's it's 20 fire rate is not bad at all. It probably should be a little bit longer, I think, but it's never mind that. It's the fact that you can actually traverse the map like that, which is absolutely insane. It's a get out of jail for free card. It's a get in free card. It has a long cooldown, of course, because it is an insanely good ability, but it matches him perfectly. So now we have his kid a bit more under control. So how should we play him really like right you know what is his deal if you want to ask me i think he's mostly a not really a support but he's like a semi ganker type character i would put him in the same no pun intended pocket as pocket and lash where this is a character that excels at being exceptionally annoying on lane because he's able to stack up damage with Jin's curse as you have a uh, lane and you lasted creeps and you occasionally start landing the occasional hit on enemies and then you pop it for a lot of damage he is very good at reducing people's health early as soon as you're level six you can acquire traveler and you can instantly rotate which is just fantastic it, it just has a really really cool kit on top of that i didn't mention this there is bullet evasion included within tornado so while we tornado here you can see we're filled with sand. We effectively have evasion the same way that a character like Hayes has, where, you know, when Hayes uses her ultimate, she has, well, it used to be 50, I think they nerfed it down to 30, uh, bullet evasion chance. Same thing with this guy. So you can go in on people with Tornado, a bit like this, and you are very, very, very safe at that stage because it actually lasts quite a while. So very, very good ability in that regard as well. So that's pretty much it. He effectively has like a long range attack with Scarabs where he can apply them. He can get in with Tornado and then he can apply Jin Curse from pretty much any distance he wants and he can use Traveler to get in or out as he pleases. So it's pretty cool. Now, the way I've set it up, if we look here, but this is my own build. And if you want to use it, you can go to, you can look for Q, Shadow Demon, not Shadow Demon. The reason why I call it that is we have a character in Dota called Shadow Demon. And Jin's mark is effectively Shadow Poison on him, where you slowly stack up Shadow Poisons on lane, and much like in, when it happens in this game and in Dota, people take a lot of damage. So if you want to use my build, I have published it. It's far from finalized. It's just if you watch this video and you want to like copy anything I'm doing, you can do it. I might put up a pinned message on this video that will have like a final build. This was the first thing I came up with. So let's go through this so I can explain why I built him the way I have. Extra spirit makes sense. We just want more spirit power in pretty much every aspect we can because we're going to be playing completely around Jin's mark. Enduring spirit is going to give us some early spirit lifesteal, which is really good on top of giving us spirit power. Spirit strike is a bit more, um, you know, it depends a little bit if you can get in close or not, but again, landing an 11 second duration minus 12 spirit resistance is very powerful on top of melee being very, very good in the first place. And remember, you do have access to tornado, so you can get in very easily on people like this and then just, you know, just a gentle tap will do. So you could effectively have a scenario where this, where you're taking a fight with, with Infernos here, you get him up to four and then go in on him, tap him and then use Jin's Mark manually. He will take a lot of damage early if you can manage that. It definitely takes some practice, but there's some good application in there for 
an item like Spirit Strike. Sprint would make sense, just more movement speed is good and it's very, very efficient. High velocity mag is more of a, I just wanted to slot some oranges in there. This may or may not be what I want. It's just there. Hollow Point Ward rather is just very efficient and it gives spirit power. 22 weapon damage when you're above 60% health is a pretty good thing. Burst is a bit special because as I've tested it, you need a certain amount of damage for this to proc, which makes sense. It has to be 80. Now, whether or not you can achieve 80 burst damage depends a little bit on how much spirit you have. If you do get spirit strike off, you can definitely achieve it with four in Jin's Mark. But this is more a, it will not work maybe as well as it should, but it will move into improves burst, which is extremely good coming into mid game. So you want this anyway. It's just too bad it doesn't give like flat or spirit or something instead of six weapon damage because we really want spirit damage more than anything else really next up is tormentor's pulse now this is the biggest what are you doing my dude on this list now bear with me here they just buffed tormentor's pulse significantly it's a very good item and it fits him actually quite well because you can always get in on people with traveler and because of how safe you are with tornado you can be really really annoying and hard to kill while racking up damage with tormentor's pulse now bear in mind i don't necessarily recommend you do this early start playing him without tormentor's pulse first like if you want to get into mirage and you want to get a feel for him don't play him with tormentor's pulse first this is highly something i'm mostly testing i'm gonna do a follow-up in message pin where i explain whether i like it or not probably i think it has potential the main downside of course being that tormentor's pulse does not actually activate your jinx curse it has to be bullets that do it so there's that he's also not very good at farming inherently the character so tormentor's pulse can help a lot there now what you do want is search of power because how it works now the crazy part here is you can actually put search of power here we want to put it on jinx mark and you all you want this in every game this is almost the best item you can get not quite but we're almost there search of power is good because first and foremost you can do that and activate search of power and the only thing you're basically waiting for is the cooldown from well sop to come off now we want to have that on cooldown so if i do that again you can then see here that search of power is going down now with the newest update it will actually announce to you as a player when search of power is about to come offline again or like online rather but off cooldown there you go and now we can activate it again so that's pretty cool we actually have a way to get a burst of movement speed because Yes, we're activating Jin's Mark, which doesn't do any damage because we don't have any Jin's Marks, but it's cool to have access to an amount of burst speed if we need it. It's just nice to have, right, in club situations. That's not the important part. The important part here is that the 34 imbued ability spirit power is placed before the Jin's Mark damage is done. So if we go, if we just slowly stack up here on Infernus, and we go click, 138 is a lot now we can take this off here this is a total of 12 plus 34 if you try and get the same amount of spirit damage from blues it will not add up to the same amount of damage done so it's really cool that it actually applies the spirit ability power before the Jin's curse damage i tested this with uh, mystic vulnerability which sadly doesn't work if you do apply Jin's curse and you have mystic vulnerability it will not apply the minus 12 first Maybe they'll change it. This is what Valve is like. This is why I dig into these kind of characters. But Search of Power will work and it's very powerful. So definitely get it in every game. Soul Shredder Bullets makes sense. It's another way for you to get more Spirit Life Steal and just Spirit Amp is really, really good for Mirage. Enchanter Spirit is just nice to have some Spirit Shield. And again, while you are shielded, you get 20 extra Spirit Power. It's nice and we have a lot of open slots this way as well. We can always remove Spirit Strike if technically, you know if we really want both of these. The Nuke Speed is just an upgrade from Sprint Boots. It's just nice to have more movement speed, even more so because you definitely want to move around with your Traveler ability and get kills on people because it's powerful to do so and this helps doing just that. Mystic Shot, I'm a bit... I'm not sure whether or not I think it is a buy-in for him or not, but it's very inexpensive and it's some extra spirit damage and we always do a lot of it especially if we combine it with all of these extra items that we are also definitely going to get later it starts doing a lot of damage and you see it on pocket a lot for a lot of reasons too and like i said if i had to compare it to a character he's a lot like pocket as well improved burst is really really good because you will do a humongous amount of burst damage we will see here if we just quickly get him up to just you know let's do four again you will see here we'll pop him bam look at that that's great that's fantastic improved spirit there you go also just good i mean it's flat it's just 
it's just flat spirit power. Like, what else can I say? The sprint speed on top of it is really, really nice. It also built into boundless spirit, which is definitely something that we want. I want to tie that into escalating exposure. We'll get to that. Very tempting to get it on him. I haven't put it in yet. The biggest issue is that he doesn't have a consistent way of applying escalating exposure unless you get Torment Pulse. This is where the whole I'm still testing things is in the mix. Ultimately, if I find out or if I think personally that Tormentor's Pulse is a must-in buy for him to play him aggressively, then absolutely escal escalating exposure becomes mandatory. It is way too good to pass up on, but that's all the way down here. Spirit Life Steal, same thing, same reason as Enduring Spirit. We just want more Spirit Life Steal because it's where the predominant amount of damage we have is coming from. Now, this is a cool bit here. This is when it gets very dirty. Now, I haven't really put an order on which you should acquire these. It's entirely up to you as a player. It really, really is up to you. But Ricochet is really awesome on him, and I'll show you why. Look at this. So Ricochet actually works with Jim's Curse, and that is just, look at that. That is, how is that fair, right? You're actually Ricocheting and getting Jim's Curses on people. That's crazy. Like, that is so good. So when you're taking these like long fights with the teams and you're just like hitting bullets, you will actually stack up a humongous amount of Jin's Curse. It's so strong. Look at this, like that's not fair. It is so easy because normally if people are, if, if they're against you, they start getting scared when, when they're up to about, I would say when they're on times four, that's when they really should start being scared and they will try to hide. You can't hide from ricocheting bullets. You can just keep firing away. It doesn't matter because you land them. Look at this. That's not fair. Like, this is not fair. Look at that. It's fantastic. So much damage. It's just crazy. So, I definitely think it's not something you should rush, but ricochet by mid to mid late game, like when you have other items going, again, remember, I haven't really bought anything here. It's just absurdly powerful. It's very, very good. From the Spirit, same reason why Improved Spirit is good. Just like adding 60, if we buy it here, you can see here. It will significantly improve the amount of damage you'll do with your burst. It's just, it's not even funny. Look at this. I mean, look at that. How is that fair? Right? Like, how is that fair? So there's some huge potential here with Ricochet. It's so awesome. Naturally, Spirit Overflow is also here. It just gives you bonus Spirit Power for charging it up. The Fire Rate is a bit... Mm, I don't think Fire Rate is very necessary in this character, mostly because there is an innate waiting time for Jin's Mark, if we do here. There's a innate waiting time for whether or not we can apply, so it doesn't really matter if you fire off 10 shots really quickly, because we're still waiting for being able to reapply the Jin's Curse. That's where the predominant amount of damage we have from. It's still extra physical damage, so there's that. I just don't think it is a must thing you should be rushing toward. In Hellbirder, it's purely there as more of a support thing, especially combined with Ricochet. It's just nasty because you'll be inhibiting a lot of people like this, which is really, really good because it, your teammates and yourself included will take significantly less damage from both magic and physical when they are applied because this is a flat minus 35. So that's just, it's so juicy and it pairs so well with Ricochet. So that's pretty much the kind of build I've cooked up for now. It's far from, you know, it is far from done. It is very far from done, but it's what I have in mind, roughly. And it's a good starting ground, I think. And with this kind of kid, the entire point is you can come from any side you want. We can, again, use this, get in like this. Use Traveler, we get in. We use Tornado as we want here. Get the Beatles. And you can see, like, Ricochet just going off. There you go. You see how good it is. It's just so much damage. You gotta be careful though, because it's just, I didn't even click there. You have a lot of damage, but you are not ultra tanky with this character. You rely a lot on Tornado, so you gotta be a bit careful. That's pretty much it for what I have for Remirage. Like I said, I think you should be playing him as a bit like Pocket, a bit like Lash, where you wanna play very underhanded, dare I say. Uh, you can take long out fights, because again, it doesn't matter as long as you connect a bullet, you will apply your curse which is fantastic from a long distance which is really 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 powerful no matter what they're going to take a lot of magic damage and then you can also go in and finish it off so there's going to be a lot of you doing that from a distance only to have people then duck and cover and then you can swoop in and you can apply more and then you can kill them off like how cool is that so in general i'm just like really happy with this character design it's super unique he plays unlike anyone else i think and he's just really really fun and he's very very strong it's very, very, very likely that he's going to get nerfed fairly quickly. I don't personally think he is that 
broken compared to say Shiv when he was released. Shiv was all over this place. He definitely has potential to be absolutely nuts and reach insane damage numbers. And he's fun. It's definitely going to take a lot of practice because there's a lot to him. But once people get the hang of him, we're in for a character that is very powerful. I want to say thank you guys for watching. Hope this video proved a bit useful. And if you want to test out Mirage, you really should. He's fun. And again, as I said, if you want to look at the list I have, you can find it by going to Q Shadow Demon or just write Q or Shadow Demon and you can find it. It's published. It's far from done, but it might give you an idea of what to do and then either build your own guide or look for other guides. At the end of the day, I hope you try him out. He's really, really fun. Get some practice in with him. He's just such a unique and interesting character. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your deadlock games and I hope you win future games that you're going to play.